Welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, first of all, this is the first time that I'm using a new microphone setup, and I hope that everything works out well with this. We'll see how it goes. But this is an episode on C++11, and this episode is continuing where I left off on the episode on C++98, which was basically explaining what really makes C++ unique and what features of C++98 you should be aware of. This episode is continuing with C++11, and I will do future episodes on 14, 17, and probably 20 someday, but I don't know exactly when that will be. It will be dependent on when C++20 is finalized and when we have compilers that support all of said features. So I am in the Compiler Explorer as usual here, and I've got C++11 set up as my standard. I am on Clang Trunk at the moment, but really I am mostly using this just as a tool to show you what features I'd like to discuss. So the main thing that C++11 added, in my opinion, is auto. Now there's some contention exactly about how often you should use auto, and there used to be the almost always auto standpoint, and I don't know how many people say that today, but I will say, and this is the way that I like to put it, is Use auto when you don't care what the type is. So for example, so let's say I want to count some number of elements in a vector. And I've got the count algorithm. And I want to do something with this count here. Now, the question that you might ask is, what is the return value type from the standard count algorithm? And I would posit that a perfectly reasonable answer is, I don't care. So I can do this. With C++11, I can just say, I don't care what the type of this thing is. Do whatever is reasonable. And this actually makes things with generic programming much much easier than they used to be. If I've got anything that can be used with the count algorithm, then I can just use auto here. Now, but in the real world, auto is almost invaluable. So this was the first item that I wanted to mention. Now, the second one is ranged for loops. And ranged for loops really particularly shine with auto as well. So let's take this count things vector that we have here. And let's just say, I don't know, we want to do things with something. And that's kind of the point here. We're in generic programming land. And this is particularly helpful. Now, with a pre-C++11 ranged for loop, we would end up with, well, let's take this out from being a template so that we can really bring this home. If we wanted to iterate over the elements of this vector, we might do something like this. This is in C++ 98. This becomes very complicated if we wanted to use a template here. So we're going to leave this just as this vector of int. We know the type here. And we will take this into a C++ 11 for, uh, ranged for loop.
The amount of boilerplate code that is removed here is absolutely astounding, and using auto here is particularly helpful, and using a const auto reference is even more helpful because it can eliminate the possibility of things like slicing. Getting this right in C++ 98 was rather hard. And if we want to bring this back into template land now, we can in fact iterate over any container of any things with a very simply written ranged for loop. The third important thing that C++11 added is lambdas. I already mentioned this count algorithm here, but let's just say we want to count all of the things that are less than three. like this. And a lambda in C++ 90, well, a lambda in C++ 11, that is, allows us to do something very simple like this. We can say I want to take an int, and that is this, and then I want to do return i is less than 3, and our lambda declaration here is quite handy. This has no captures at the moment, and I have made many, many C++ weekly episodes about lambdas. So if you want to know anything about that, then I suggest you go to one of those other episodes. And this is the parameter list, and then this is the body of the lambda. And it's a very simple way of creating a function object, and it saves us a lot of boilerplate code again. The fourth thing that I would like to mention that C++11 gave us is very attic templates. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. Again, there's been about three or four episodes of C++ Weekly just on very attic templates, but I will say just for your to get your interest here that it looks kind of something like this. Now, inside of here, I can expand the set of parameters. And in C11, this is a little bit limited, but let's just, uh, let's do something like this. This is the most simplistic way of expanding a variadic parameter set in C++11 and using this as a way to generically call some sort of a function. Now, I did a much earlier episode of C++ Weekly on a variadic template refactor of ChiScript, which you might find interesting in this context here to understand where variadic templates can really help things out. The fifth thing that I would like to mention is unique pointer. This is a pretty handy thing. It fixes some bugs in the uh, language with auto pointer. Auto pointer never really should have existed. It never did quite what we wanted it to do. But that's okay because C11 gave us move semantics and um, move only types and unique pointer and we end up with something like this. We can in fact create a function so I have just allocated a pointer on the heap in C11 and I know when this goes out of scope that this value is going to be popped from the stack and its memory is going to be freed and this goes back to destructors and RAII and those very important things that C++ 98 set the framework for. So go back and watch the episode on C++ 98 and C++ 03 for some more background on that. Now the final thing that I would like to mention is constexpr. ConstExpert in C11 was indeed quite limited, but you could create a ConstExpert function that calculates some value of some sort, and it can only call other ConstExpert functions, and it 
can only have a single return statement and uh, you know it's basically very limited but you have to in C++11 anything that's const expr has to be expressed in a recursive fashion basically but you can do pretty much anything the limitations that we had in C++11 are quite arbitrary those get cleaned up in later versions of the language and I will discuss those later when I talk about C++14 and C++17 but I can do you know something like this so in C++11 I can calculate a value and I can get access to it at compile time and you might wonder why in the world const expert here this means that this value the value actually called value is available in a compile time context so that is important for if I wanted to create an array of some size of these things and I can in C++11 using const expr like this so I've got an array of whatever the value of this is which is an integer that is 5 times 13 so the size of this array is 15 so there you have it this is what I would say is the six most important things that C++11 added to the language and these are things that you need to know something about to really get the most out of the language of course there are many other things C++11 was an absolutely huge update to the language and one of the most significant things that happened in the C++ world so I'm definitely simplifying things here but check these out and I hope you enjoyed this episode of C++ Weekly and that you got something out of this be sure to subscribe